It's May 5th, 2018. We're in Cleveland, Ohio for Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals between the vengeful Toronto Raptors and the domineering hometown Cavaliers. Tied at 103 with seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, the Raptors are down to their last chance to prove to the world, and possibly themselves, that they can stop the Cavs. If they win, they're one step closer to that goal. If they fall flat on their face, their season will likely end in a way that's become all too familiar with this dude on the other end. But before we see what comes next, we gotta rewind. The Raptors have to be sick of this by now. This is their third straight postseason clash with the Cavs, and unfortunately for Toronto, Cleveland has smoked them every time. The Raptors just recently proved they're more than an expansion team. When the franchise celebrated its 20th anniversary during the 2015 season, the team had advanced past the first round of the playoffs just one time. They capped off their milestone season, staying true to form and getting swept in the first round. However, the following year came with a new look. The organization abandoned its cartoonish dribbling dino for a simple shield. With that new look came a few new faces, but more importantly, some elevated play by their rising stars of this franchise, DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. They were the engine of this team, forming a dynamic backcourt and becoming the franchise's first pair of all-star teammates. Toronto broke from tradition and enjoyed a magical postseason run, advancing to their first ever conference finals. Unfortunately, they ran into LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, and the rest of the Cavaliers, who went on to win Cleveland's first ever NBA title. Although Toronto lost the series in six, they had plenty of positives to take away. Highlights included delivering Cleveland their first loss of the postseason. They rallied around an us-against-the-world mentality to force it into a best-of-three series. Experts viewed the Raptors as a team ahead of schedule, thankful to find themselves deep in the postseason. Head coach Dwayne Casey saw the series as a growing opportunity to match Cleveland's level. The following year, the Raptors established they weren't just some team happy to be in the mix, but a legit threat in the East. They reached the conference semifinals for a rematch against the Cavs. Journalists believe the Raptors were better suited for a more competitive series, but despite the optimism, it went far worse. Once again, instead of sulking, DeRozan and the rest of Toronto knew they had to take it on the chin and get it back next year. And here they are, fighting for another conference finals appearance. This team just keeps evolving. They're here thanks to some new faces that can hopefully lead to new results. The 2018 Raptors thrived off a splendid mix of their go-to stars with some rather fresh faces. The backcourt leaders unsurprisingly kept things rolling, adding more all-star appearances while building a precious bromance in the process. But the team also leaned heavily on the presence of their adaptable young bench which allowed Casey the piece to never stress who was on the floor. A standout of the youthful bunch was rookie OG Ananobi. Headed into the 2017 draft, experts drooled over Ananobi's defensive prowess and upside, but his injury history and questions around his offensive game saw him fall to Toronto late in the first round, leading ESPN analysis Fran Fischilla to call him a sexy blogger pick. <laughs> Turns out the bloggers had an eye for sex appeal. I mean, I mean, draft talent. Toronto relied on Ananobi's defensive versatility, able to guard spots one through five, as he often found himself in the starting lineup. With Laurie and DeRozan holding it down, the youngins making noise, and consistent veteran support, the Raptors had arguably the most complete roster in the NBA and went on to win a franchise record 59 games earning the top seed in the conference. Strapped with home court advantage throughout the postseason, these new and dangerous Raptors are prepared to make a deep run. After knocking off the Wizards in the first round, Toronto had to ready themselves for another showdown against their playoff nemesis. 
for the Raptors, there was no better opportunity to prove their legitimacy than finally besting the Cavs. If they wanted that championship trophy, DeRozan knew they had to go through the best. You know how the saying goes, third time's a charm cause you already know what failure feels like? Okay, that's def a low blow, but god damn. That's three seasons straight where the Raptors lost the opening two games against the Cavs. And tonight's game three didn't start pretty. To pop things off, Casey opted to go smaller, making a major lineup change, inserting second year man Fred Van Vliet in the leading five, joining Ananobi who started the entire series. Casey fully bet on his youthful talent, but the gamble didn't pay off early. It wasn't all on the young guys. The Cavs just dominated the Raptors as a unit from the jump and entered the fourth quarter with a 14 point lead. Although, just as it appeared to be another yearly drubbing from Cleveland, Toronto clawed back, led by a surprising offensive output from their rook. Down 12 with less than 10 minutes to play, Ananobi caught a pass in the corner and knocked in a three, bringing Cleveland's lead to single digits. After trading baskets for a few minutes, Ananobi refused to let Cleveland run away with the lead and drained this spot up backboard three, cutting Cleveland's lead to four. Look, the shot might not have been pretty, but the Raptors found themselves within striking distance thanks to OG, and he wasn't finished. As Toronto trailed by five with less than two minutes to play, Ananobi drove to the rim, missed his layup, but grabbed the rebound and went up for a strong putback. Following missed shots by both sides and Cleveland splitting free throws, Toronto absolutely needed a bucket. Down four with under 30 seconds to play, Lowry took over and put Jeff Green on skates before accelerating to the rim for a smooth lay, bringing the Raptors within two. This is what you got with the new and improved Raptors. Up until that point, their splendid mix of new and old talent was on full display with the fourth quarter becoming the Kyle and OG show. With less than 20 seconds left, the Raptors were forced to foul and sent Green to the line. As an 87% shooter from the stripe, Green knocking down both shots would have made things extremely difficult for Toronto. After hitting the first one, the second free throw could very well be the game. Uh-oh. Toronto still has a chance, but with no timeouts, they need to hurry. Pushing the ball up the court, CJ Miles found Ananobi behind the three-point line who sent Green flying with a pump fake before drilling a game-tying three. Here's a dude in his first season showing no fear in crunch time and nailing the biggest shot of his young career. With little time remaining, Cleveland chose to take the ball out under the basket instead of advancing to half court. It's an interesting choice, but oh no. If you're a Raptors fan, this is by far the last person you wanna see with the ball charging down the court. Not only is LeBron James a locomotive in open space, ready to barrel over anyone who gets in his way, but he's been the main protagonist in Toronto's recurring nightmare. Over LeBron's illustrious career, experts have tried poking holes in his game, critiquing him for shying away from big moments. It's kind of a silly critique, but one team LeBron surely never lacked confidence against was the Toronto Raptors. In 2005, during his second year in the league, LeBron dropped a then career high 56 points in Toronto. Three years later, he added another statement game up north, wiping away a Raptors 20 point lead in a win that became Toronto's biggest collapse in franchise history. LeBron had a fantastic regular season record against the Raptors, but he was even more menacing to Toronto in the postseason. In 2016, when the Raptors emerged as a new threat in the Eastern Conference, Braun hardly viewed them as a real competitor. After Toronto tied the conference final series at two games, LeBron and the Cavs smacked the Raptors in game five. Adding insult to injury, after the win, LeBron said the situation wasn't one to really worry about. I guess you're allowed to talk that way if you nearly average a double-double in the series. The following season, it's not like the Raptors rolled over. Besides their backcourt duo steadily improving, the team made strategic moves with the specific aim of taking down LeBron. They got more physical, 
adding wing defender P.J. Tucker in the offseason, and acquired Sergi Baca through a midseason trade who added toughness in the paint. No matter, a sweep is one thing, but Braun toyed with Toronto the entire series. During game one, he was just rude in a 35-point double-dub performance that included a filthy offhand slam set up by Kyrie Irving laying one off the glass. Later, he showed just how easy things were going by pretending to drink a beer on the sideline after a foul call. In game two, LeBron continued to show little consideration for the Raptors. He tried Ibaka, treating a three-point shot like a damn free throw routine before splashing it right in his face. The disrespectful played the Raptors like a JV team, and honestly, his numbers fully backed up his antics. Although, this 2018 season, LeBron and Cleveland were positioned to finally fall against Toronto. Cleveland had gone through a dramatic roster overhaul during the season, and the team struggled to find its identity. It took seven games for the Cavs to get past the scrappy Indiana Pacers in the first round, where they needed a buzzer-beater winning shot from LeBron in Game 5. This wasn't the same mighty Cavs that the Raptors faced in the past. But the one constant was LeBron James. In the series opening game, Toronto had Cleveland on the ropes, controlling the lead for the entirety of regulation. But of course, LeBron knocked down a game-tying shot with 30 seconds remaining in the fourth before going on to steal game one on the road. The following game, Toronto showed up to play again. Everything looked smooth for the Raptors as they took a two-point lead into halftime. Then, the third quarter happened. LeBron exploded with a ridiculous stat line, which led ESPN announcer Mark Jones to drop this statement heading into break. We'll be back to LeBronto for the fourth quarter after this. LeBronto? King James had owned Toronto so much that announcers were ready to turn the naming rights of the city over to him. It's like LeBron had mind control over the Raptors. No matter the roster changes or how much they improve, every time they faced them in the postseason, they crumbled into pieces. And tonight's game didn't start off any different. Whether it was LBJ using his strength, driving to the hole and drawing an and one, or threading the needle to find his teammate on a sweet pass, he was everywhere on the floor as Cleveland took a 15 point lead into the half. And unfortunately for Toronto, he was only heating up. As the Raptors started to strike back in the fourth quarter, Brian kept them in check. When Toronto pulled within five points with under eight minutes to play, LeBron hit Ananobi with a clean one dribble pull up. Later when Cleveland held on to a two point lead, Bron split defenders on his way to the rim before finishing a tough layup and drawing the foul. The man hit an assortment of shots, but really started feeling himself late in the fourth. As Toronto brought it back within three points, LeBron backed down CJ Miles into the paint, then whipped out a silky turnaround fadeaway jumper. LeBron locked in and continued to deny Toronto's chance to take the lead, but he wasn't perfect. With 30 seconds to play and an opportunity to extend Cleveland's lead to five at the free throw line, LeBron split his shots at the charity stripe. It may not seem like a lot, but in a tight game of this magnitude, a missed free throw shot here and another missed shot there adds up to a rookie potentially being a hero for his team on the other end. Which brings us here. With the clock ticking in its final seconds, if the Raptors get a stop, they will have a chance to win this game in overtime and overcome a performance by the man that's tortured them for years. LeBron loves getting his teammates involved, but as he makes his way up the court, he could add another gut-wrenching moment by ripping out Toronto's heart with a game-winning shot. Welcome to a moment in history. Three seconds to go. Throws up the floater. Oh, good Good night, Cleveland! That is for you! Hello, thanks for watching. Sorry to the people of Toronto that had to relive that pain, but I promise we have some positive content for you. And if you want to see someone other than LeBron be the hero for the Cavs, give this a look. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coming back. Peace.